I know. Well, this is my first one that's made me miss. <laughs> so I'm hoping it's just a little blimp in the radar again. But um, yeah, fingers crossed. Here yeah. we go. But I should be back this weekend, hopefully. If not, definitely back the gather round. Perfect. Not going to be easy against the Sydney Swans. Mm. or probably the form team of the comp or right up there with the Giants. Mate. They, the way they use the footy, Errol Goulden and um, Braden Campbell. Nick and Blakely. Lick, <laughs> Mate, you're going to be playing on Logan McDonald or something like that, and they're going to be putting it on an absolute platter oh. for the blokes you were playing on. You got your work cut out this weekend. Yeah, guy, I watched the Sydney game pretty closely on the weekend, and oh, even Chad Warner, it looks like he's running at about 70%, and then he just drops a sidestep and opens the whole game up. So, um, yeah, our midfielders and our backs are going to be on our toes this weekend, but I'm excited. Hopefully I'm back out there playing on the G again. But um, yeah, we've, we've been in games for a good period of time. So hopefully we can be in one longer this weekend with Sydney. What did we think about the physicality that the Bombers bought? I found it very funny that, that you know, halftime, post-match, they were kind of laughing it off. But Sydney, this is a, this is a team that came for a 20-year-old in Nick Dacos only last year. So it's a bit hypocritical, wasn't it? Yeah, I think that's actually not a bad call. I like that Essendon are trying to have a presence. I loved it. On the field. I think Peter Wright got it wrong. Oh, yeah, big time. And, and he'll miss a month of footy or thereabouts. Mm. He'd be lucky if he gets off three. And you could see that was really weighing heavily on him throughout the game. You can see, you know, it was really taking a big toll on him. He kicked a couple of long goals, um, et cetera. I like it from Essendon because what have they stood for for the past 20 years, mm. like not a lot. Mm. So I'm, I'm like, but there is a fine line broadening. Yeah, there is. I hope they don't stop now because everyone in the media has come out and said, oh, did they go too far? Cause I agree. Exactly. I think it was, it was fine. Obviously, like you said, Peter, I got it wrong, but I hope they stick with it now because it's something for their fans to jump on board. They're going, they're going well. Um, and they haven't played a final in so long. So I hope they stick at it. Yeah. I want to ask you about a young fella's debut in Kelty on the weekend. You said he had 200 tickets. <laughs> it was out. Of, it was awesome. It was out of control. He did not ask for 200, 200 tickets. tickets. He no, had, he so didn't. They all had custom Kelty shirts. Um, they did the Hucker before, obviously. In yeah, the room, I saw that. That was just, brilliant. Oh, one of the best things I've ever seen. Um, mm. I wanted to pull the boots back on and screw the calf and get out there. But well, Goosebumps. Um, yeah, it yeah. was unbelievable. It was just incredible. And then they were sitting in front of us in the family section for the game. And they had all these chants that they'd obviously pre-done. Um, and then it was an amazing story actually, because Kelty was meant to be the sub and Morris Rioli hurt his back with about two minutes to go in the warm up. In the warm up, yeah. And then Juddy, Judson Clark went to sub and Kelty became wow. full game. So when he ran on, they erupted and everyone around just like looked like scared everyone. <gasps> like, whoa. So it was awesome. Yeah. Amazing um, to see. And good for the game. Give us example of the chants you were hearing. You you've you given it to me off air. So come on. <laughs> yeah. well, it's one you hear in the golf a fair bit these days with the, oh yeah. And then everyone, oh yeah. So <laughs> um, you hear it after the golf swing in the pros these days. Yeah. So they gave it that one after a few gym beams into the voice. So, um, no, nah, they were awesome entertainment and they were, they were going to the last bounce, which is awesome. And unfortunately, Kelty didn't score a goal. He got very, very close with about a couple of minutes to go and was always looking to pass it off. So um, very selfless. Quite similar though. Obviously, Kelty coming in last minute, but your debut as well. You yeah. weren't meant to be playing the morning of a debut. You were gearing up for the VFL. Is that right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Breakfast about 9.30 and getting ready for VFL and Dimmer gave me the call. We had a day game at the MCG and um, said, don't panic, um, but just, yeah, make Get your way to the MCG. Now. You You're in. <laughs> um, yeah, amazing way to debut, really. Less time to think. Um, mm. Family couldn't make it, which is disappointing, but less time to think and got the win. So it was awesome. Hard to cross the Nullarbor in uh, two yeah. hours, mate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Might not get that done. <laughs> hey, uh, we want to, I think the, um, well, it's going to be the big story this week. Uh, clearly, uh, Brisbane playing on Collingwood. If Brisbane win, that means Collingwood 0-4. Mm. It will end... You would think they're far. I think it would end their finals hopes, to be honest. It's hard to make it from 0-3, let alone 0-4. Then, then again, the Lions with everything on the line as well. Yeah. Brody, you won flag in 2017, got back up 2018, got knocked out by the Pies in the 2018 preliminary final, the Mason Cox game. How could we forget? <laughs> won the flag in 2019, back-to-back 2020, got three premierships. 2021, you didn't make it. Um, what is it like when you've climbed the mountain like Collingwood and you have to do it again the next season. Like it's an interesting psychology. Like you've experienced the thrill, the satisfaction, the joy. How do you try and develop that hunger again? Because the conversation around Collingwood is that they, they're satisfied. They're not as desperate. Yeah, it's, it's tough. And obviously you won the flag the year before. So everyone, when they play, uh, they, they play that extra 5%, 10% tougher because you are the pinnacle and they want to knock you off. But um Collingwood had like a month less of preseason training than the teams that didn't make finals or made finals early. Mm. And a month of preseason is a, is a lot. You can get a shitload done in a month. So I think even though they are zero and three, I just, I wouldn't write them off just yet. It's a long season. 
um, and they could get on a roll and get going. Like in 2017, after the mid-season buy at the Tigers, we were uh, about 10th. And then we went on to win the flag. So oh, yeah, yeah, we were sitting tenth. So we we were um, we went into the bye, and Jimmy just said, "When we come back, you know, we're, we're still in this. We just got to make mm -hmm. finals. We're on a roll." And I think we won about ten in a row after that. So although Collingwood potentially could go zero and four this Friday night, I just think don't poke the bear too much because they they've still got the same list as when they won the flag. The players haven't changed. Yeah, I think they've just got a less a month less of training under their belt than everyone else. Mm. Um, and I think they've got good enough players there who are hungry and want to get it done. So. I just think be, yeah, be careful. And Craig McRae is an unbelievable coach. I was lucky enough to have him yeah, at Richmond for a, a few years. And, um, I know he'd be getting the boys up and going. Um, so yeah, look out. So take me back to say 2019. So you beat GWS in that grand final. You come up to the start of 2020 going for three in four years. How did he, how did he wind you up? How did he frame it dimmer? Like how did he, how did he raise you mm. up? How did he keep the hunger? How did he keep you on edge? Um, he's a very good speaker, Jim, a very good storyteller, which is, I think half your battle is selling a story to the group. And he sold the story to the group really well. It's just, we need to get better again. Mm. Um, we need to develop again. Uh, we need to change again. And, and he also put it back on the blokes who missed out saying like next year, I want to see, you know, you blokes here yeah. instead of some of these guys, which then gives them, you know, a good story to follow. So I think how, how you sell the story to the group, um, is a lot, but you have to get better. You have to train hard. You have to change. You mm. can't just stay stay the same because teams figure you out very, very quickly. So you've always got to be on the go. And unfortunately, yeah, we have had a drop off, but, um, we've had amazing success, but I still believe, um, we've got more to come. But that's one of the things that Craig McRae lives by is getting better every single day. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. it's certainly something that they've focused on, not just, you know, over the last few weeks, but mm. Craig McRae was saying that every single week last year in his press conferences, that's their focus is just being 1% better tomorrow mm. or just better every single day. So and I reckon the way the game is these days is the game's pure momentum. There's nothing different. Teams are so even these days. Mm -hmm. Um, you used to have, you know, massive, um, differences between top and bottom. And now I don't think we have that. I just think it's momentum. You look at games like Carlton, what were they? 40, 50 points down against Brisbane. They come yeah, back and won. Points, yeah. Uh, Richmond, we were 70 points down. We get back to three goals. Um, so it's momentum. And I think Collingwood, if they get momentum going, it's then you can just go win, win, yeah. win, win, win. And who knows, you know, you could be sitting eighth and still win it from eighth. So they've yeah. got problems everywhere. The pies, I think their footy, mm. their forward line looks a bit toothless. Mm. Mm. Darcy Moore doesn't look like the same player to me. And they've got issues down, um, back and I know they miss Nathan Murphy in, in the midfield. I feel like there's a balance issue because last year, Nick Dacos, when he looked like the best player in the competition, played a lot of halfback, right? Mm. Talent behind the ball and breaking lines, using his skills. So then he get, gets to 11 and he says, right, I want to be a midfielder. So he steps in now into the midfield over the first uh, couple of rounds with Geordie, but then it's a very, like it throws out the balance a little bit. Like I don't, I don't think they've figured that out yet because in the middle, um, you know, for whatever reason, they haven't been able to dominate games out of there like they, like they used to. I was a big one for putting Nick Dacos back yep. on that half back line because that's where they were lacking just that punch off half back and the way that they carried the footy. Yep. Bring young Finn McRae into the starting 22. Yep. Let him have a crack at it over yep. the first month, you know, six weeks of the season. And Nick Dacos offers so much off half back. Yep. Yes, we know he's going to be a quality mid. There's no doubt about that. He's got a very, very long career ahead of him, but that's just where they were lacking their punch. And on Friday, when did they play? Friday night, Thursday night, Friday night. Thursday, Thursday night. night. I, I thought the first, first five minutes of the game, pies are on. You know, you had Darcy Moore with a massive spoil. You had Quainor getting involved and Dacos as well. And I thought pies are good here, but it lasted all of about 10 to 15 minutes. So, mm. um, yeah, and as Fly says, it's just their basic fundamentals that they're not quite getting right at the moment. But I, I'm very optimistic that things are going to turn for the Pies. That's with the turnovers in the back half. And you know this, Brody, like you, if you butcher the ball within 60 metres to goal, <laughs> the opposition can make you pay. That's where you need Nick, I think. That's where they need Nick yep. at the moment, using that using that delivery off half back. Because at the moment, I feel like he's not getting the ball and they're really lacking his skill mm. um, in that part of the ground. And that, back in your premiership era, Brody, I mean, that ball you saw half back and you threw all sorts of guys around there, but yourself, uh, Basher. Bakes, Basher, yep. Shorty could play back there a little bit. Like that half back ball use is pretty crucial, right? Particularly when teams are coming to in front up and trying to pressure you. Yeah. The way the game's played these days, you need to, you need to be able to get it in your forward half. Cause once it's in there, it's very hard to get it out these days, but 
if you if you turn it over in that launch zone pad for the opposition, geez, they make you pay. Especially <laughs> someone, like, someone like a Charlie Cameron or someone who's got wheels, you just think, oh dear. Um, <laughs> so yes, but um, no, I, I agree. I think Nick Dacos off half back's a great mm. move. Harry Sheasel off half back for the yeah. Kangaroos. Yep. Um, blokes who see the game different, like it's a talent. You can't teach that. No matter how many pre-seasons you do, you cannot teach the eye of some of these players have, and, and those two players have it. Yeah. Mm. How's the new coach going, uh, Ooze? It's, it's in some ways. They're, they're big shoes and a really big challenge for him, isn't it? Because you've had such a successful era. He comes in after dimmer. How much can you tell us about how he's trying to change things up? How have you found his coaching style? Um, it's a pretty tri tricky transition, particularly now that you're blooding all these new players. It's a, it's a new era for the Tigers, isn't it? It is, yeah. He came in um, and took away the premiership things in the team meeting room, which I wasn't sure about at the start. But I'm then, not sure about that. How did that yeah. go down? Um a few of us blokes who played it and weren't quite sure about it, but once he explained the story and what we're doing going forward, it made sense. We've got the premiership walk as you go to the change rooms. So that's all still there. Every premiership, the club's won, um, and stuff. And he just said, we need to start fresh. Mm. We're not Richmond of 2020 and 2017. Yeah. And we've got to face that. It's reality. Um, which was kind of good because maybe a few of us older blokes were still living in that, you know, era that we are still who we are, but reality is we're not. Um, we've got new players, we've got young blood coming through. Um, we need a change and, He's been awesome. I, I kind of feel sorry for him, to be honest, because Carlton, we had one on the bench after halftime. Maybe we win with a full bench. Maybe we don't. I'm Nelly not sure. Nelly pinched it. Mm. Yeah, Nelly pinched it. And then on the weekend, we had six changes of pure injury. Um, and then like six changes of any team is, is tough. So you bring in six new guys who barely play and we take it up. We're up at halftime against Port Adelaide. Mm. Um, so I don't know. Maybe we could be two and one. Maybe we don't. Who knows? But... I just feel like he deserves better Uze um, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get on a few wins for him. How important is depth then when it oh, comes yeah. to winning flags? You look at, I guess, the best teams in the comp competition, the top eight sides, you do have to have a certain aspect of luck and getting through unscathed and not having too many injuries on your list. Yeah, I, we were talking about this off air before. I think the team that wins it this year will be the team that has their best 22 on the park yep. for longer because you, you build momentum, you build synergy. Um, and you've just got the same team on and changes these days. The game, like I said before, is 1% off. It's enough for two or three goals like that. So I think whoever can stay the fittest, the longest, mm. will um, yeah, will be in it for the end. What about you, good mate, um, Dusty Martin? There was a lot of talk last year about whether he would stay at Richmond, be the one club player. Um, and, and um, you know, we're clearly interested in him from Gold Coast. I think is, there's an affinity with, with Sydney there. How have you found him gear up for this season? I know he missed the first round uh, with a little uh, cork Calf. or calf nick or something yeah. like that. Um, how are you finding um, the great man? And can you take us inside? into the world of Dustin Martin because we just, we kept so far from him. I want to know so much more. I've <laughs> yes. got so many questions and no answers because he is, he's like Batman. You know, you don't see him. He comes out and does his thing at night, plays for points and then he goes back into his cave. Goes away. No, yeah. he's, he's good, Dustin. He, he, he rocked up so fit, um, so engaged in the group and um, yeah. wanted to get better. And he, he's speaking up in meetings again now and because he's, he's got the best football brain, but sometimes maybe we can't unlock it as much as we like. But mm. this year he has, he's spoken up in meetings Loves his golf. I think it's been, honestly, I think it's been a game changer in his life. He's become um, a golfer. He loves go. his golf. Yeah. Dustin Martin's become a golfer. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> oh it's honestly, God. it's honestly changed him. Just giving him this outlet yeah. away from footy where he can go. You with three other people, Max, no one around you, beautiful scenery. Mm. Um, and he, yeah, it's been awesome. It's been great to be honest, to be able to see him find an outlet that he loves. So is he any um, good at it? He's pretty, he's getting better. He's, 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 one like, <laughs> he's one of those guys that he's got his handicap now and it's not good enough. You know, I, I need to get down, yeah. down, down, which is awesome. So, um, a lot of banter goes back and forth in our <laughs> golf chat. Um, so it's, yeah, he's good. He's flying. Um, he's going really well and he's just good to see Dustin happy again. That's the main thing. I think yeah. everyone just wants to see a happy Dustin and I, a fit Dustin. I love the mystery behind Dusty though. And I love the <laughs> fact that he's just all about his footy. He doesn't care about any fluff on the outside of football. Mm. You know, he just gets in. He plays his role beautifully. He gets it done. Um, and then you just don't see Except anything. for golf now. Golf's Except for taken golf. Over. It's taken over footy. Yeah. It's his life. But just <laughs> quick one. Yeah. Yes or no. Will Dustin Martin play for another club other than Richmond Football Club? Oh, like you said, he's like Batman. Not even I know. There's, <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of people up at Gold Coast. We've had Sean Griggs up there. Yeah. Dimmer's up there. No, um, be in his Mark year. Opie's up there now. Yeah. Alex Rance is up there. So obviously it's a good there's little a lot crew. Of, yeah, they've got a great crew up there mm. now, which are good blokes. So, um, 
put it this way. If he went to Gold Coast, I wouldn't be shocked. If he stayed yeah. at Richmond, I wouldn't be shocked. So I'd, yeah. love, I'd love to see him on the Gold Coast. Would you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think Liam Baker is the one who's in an interesting contract position. Your fellow West Australian teammate, I think Fremantle on the West Coast are right into him. So unless your man Blair Hartley puts a few more... Um, Zeros on the contract. Yes, <laughs> he might have a big decision to make. Well, the way he played yesterday, I saw mm. it was his highest rated game of his career. Yep. Um, yeah, he's and he's like, he's honestly, people probably don't see this from the outside too much, but Bakes is like a Mr. Fix It. Yep. He just goes, if we need him a half back, he'll play half back. If he needs to go midfield, he'll play midfield. If he needs to go forward. And it's so hard to do in this modern game. Like, there's so many moving parts, so yep. much structure you need to know. Yep. To play three positions in a game yep. is so tough, and people probably don't see that from the outside. So some weeks he would just be selfless yep. and, you know, have his 10 touches, but have huge impact. And on the weekend he, he gets a reward. So yeah, hopefully um, Blair Hartley, if you're listening, yeah, <laughs> put those zeros on because we need him. I think he is sneaky, the toughest player in the competition, Lane Baker. Yeah. Like in terms of putting his head over the ball in dangerous places, he uh, is just never hesitates. He weighs like, he's like a jockey. Like he weighs nothing, mm. but he just doesn't care. He'll put himself in front of Charlie Dixon, Harry mm. McKay. Yep. Like he is, Love too that. tough for his own good bakes, but yep. um, yeah, love him. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back. Hey, there's a special um, milestone coming up this weekend. A man you know well. We played on him a lot, Brody. We're going to speak about that. And Abby, who's normally very happy and um, and, and carefree, uh, is angry about something. She's got a bee in her bonnet about something. <laughs> I'm going to get to the bottom of that. It's Jake Clark, Abby Holmes, and Nathan Braun. Uh, on Footy Talk, more in a second. Yes, welcome back to Footy Talk. Footy Talk is your place. The latest news, interviews, and analysis from the world of AFL. And it has been a brilliant start to the footy season. There is all sorts of stuff happening. Hey, we're going to talk to you about uh, Tommy Hawkins. He plays his 350th. What a game to do it. Easter Monday against Hawthorne. Um, one of the uh, best rivalries of the past 20 years and one of our favourite games on the footy calendar. You would have crossed paths a lot on the field with Tommy Hawkins. One of the nicest blokes going mm. around. Yeah. Is, is he, is he, is he pleasant to you on the field as well? Because <laughs> no. it'd be hard to get too wound up and, uh, and tough with him, wouldn't it? Yeah, no, nah, he's one of the good guys in footy, Tommy. He's, um, yeah, I don't know him personally too well, but obviously had a lot of interactions on the footy field and he's an absolute ripper. Um, and 350, like 350 is amazing effort. Like bloke on the weekend, 350. And then yep. we've got another 350 this weekend. How lucky are we? Because so Travis Boke, just the 23rd player in the history of our game to reach that. Yep. And then next week, Tom Hawkins becomes the 24th. So it certainly doesn't come around often. And no. we've been so fortunate to have two in a couple of weeks. You've got to have physical, but you've also got to have mental. Like to play that many games and yep. that many seasons yep. is like, it's huge effort. Especially effort. being Tom, like he's big. He's yep. a big lump of a lad. Yep. Like to keep his body cherry ripe over a very long period of time. Yep. Yeah. He would have sacrificed yep. so much time and hours outside of footy for recovery and getting yeah. himself right. And yeah, obviously when he retires, I don't know when that'll be, but he'll owe a lot to his wife to um to yeah. get back and take her on a holiday, I think, because she would have sacrificed a lot too. And not only that, you look at, I'm not, I'm not sure if you guys all follow, you know, Emma Hawkins and Tom Hawkins mm. on social media, but if he's not at bloody Cardinia Park, he's on the tractor. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he doesn't really seem to stop, I does would, he? I would love a farm like that myself. <laughs> that is, he's got a great setup down there. Yeah. Is it right? Does Joel, did Joel say we call him Tim Tam? Does he call him Tim Tam? Have you heard that, Abby? No. In your, the Geelong rooms? No. I think he likes eating him so much that Joel actually <laughs> calls I Like, I'm sorry if I've got, if yeah. I've got that wrong. Well, I'm pretty sure Joel Selwood yeah. calls him Tim Tam. Tim Maybe Tim man. Found that at first before we ran with it. Uh, but anyway, one of the great blokes, Tommy Hawkins, kicked a uh, lot of goals. The Cats, I tell you what, I reckon we might have underrated them coming mm, in. I, I mean, I don't think they figured in a whole heap of players of people's top eights. But you look at, um, I know Dangerfield's going to miss some footy. Tommy Stewart. People talk a lot about Alex Rance, about being one of the greatest defenders of all time. Sort of Matty Scarlett, Alex Rance. I wonder whether Tommy Stewart will be third on that Mount Rushmore by the end of his career. Brody plays a similar position to you, doesn't he? Floats off, reads it, gets in between. Do you? How much have you, have you admired his game over the journey? Yeah, I'm actually watching his game tomorrow, actually. Um, oh, yeah? From the weekend. I was I was blown away. It was one of the best games of footy mm-hmm. I've watched. Um, yep. 10 intercept marks, yeah, equal record, nuts. 15 intercept possessions. Um, but the, the beauty of Tom is a lot of intercept defenders these days don't actually defend, I feel. Yep. They just, you know, they can play on a smaller player and, and have, have the easy run kind of, which yep. is fair enough. Like you, you need to have intercept players, but I feel like Tommy just does both. He, um, yeah, he just, he defends and he intercepts as well. Yeah. It was funny because Nixie ran Luke Pedler with him in the first quarter on Friday night. Yeah, right. Mm. He had four intercept marks. Well, they had eight 
intercept marks in total. Tommy, so they, they were like genuine one on one. Yeah, not absolutely. Just across, they were, yeah. But then I interviewed Matty Nix at half time, and he was like, "We dropped it at quarter time," but was, he was actually playing better with a tag. <laughs> <laughs> so we just got to let him go. We got to let him roam. You cannot stop that man. Yeah, from Barwon Heads, I want to pick up by Scarlet. Incredible That's, story. Yeah, one mm. in a million. Yeah. You were fourth on the Mount Rushmore too. Oh, thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the Cats are absolutely flying. What about Melbourne? What do we make of them? Because uh, they're back on the winners list, but now Stephen May mm. is going to miss confirmed one with a pair of fractured ribs and Jake Lever's is a test with, his, with a knee. So we know that those two have been the absolute bedrock of the Melbourne performance over the last six yeah. years, really. Can you, t- what's the adjustment going to be like? Probably Tomlinson comes back. Um, Petty as well. Maybe or... Petty plays back. Yeah. What, that, what, what's, what would it be like for the players coming in to replace certainly may at least, and maybe leave up Bordy. Like, um, it's a big adjustment for the demons. They take on Port Adelaide this weekend. Yeah. I think if, if both go out, gee, I couldn't That's remember. Huge, the, yeah. I can't remember the last time they played without May or Lever, let yep. alone both. Yep. Um, it'll be very tough. Like you, the back line, I feel like probably being biased because I play back line, but I feel like back line is the one line you have to be in sync and so connected. Mm. Um, and two massive pillars out of that will definitely take a toll. But like you said, they do have good good backs down there. Tomlinson's a good player. Petty's a great defender. So yep. um, they'll make it work, but will it be as connected as what they usually are? Probably not. Mm. How good was Petrarca's celebration of his foil on the weekend? I <laughs> the loved that. Cobra. The double cobra. Because he said he averages, what, one defensive effort inside D50 a year and he's done it in round two. I thought that was brilliant. Do some blokes have a licence, uh, Brody? I mean, well, probably Dusty's the man. Back so not in to the defend? Pre- or? Yeah, just to do their own thing. <laughs> just to do their absolutely own thing. Does anyone in your team had that over the journey? The key's just to do whatever they We've like. We've probably got too many. No. <laughs> uh, We've got a couple that have their, like, obviously Dustin can he do what he wants, but he does defend really well. But, um, yeah. What they, what they don't do on defence, they um, absolutely make do on for. offence and make up. So I'm happy to, for them to keep doing their thing. D- does he buy Kane Lambert a beer every time they're at the pub together? He, yeah, he should do. That's We are chatting about yeah. this off air, how Kane Lambert just um, owes, Dusty owes everything to Kane Lambert because <laughs> the way we used to play it was Kane, you cover for Dustin and Dustin, do you do whatever you want. You so, do you, man. Yeah. So maybe that's why Kane had to retire with a sore hip. It's over, <laughs> overworked. <laughs> Been carrying you good, mate. Now, yeah. you were angry about some part, the umpiring, yeah, um, look. Abby. What's the story? Okay, so I was listening to Sonia Hood on radio yep. on the way in, and she basically put out a statement saying, I would hate to be an umpire at the moment. And you know what? I have to, be- I have to agree with her. Yep. These poor umpires, right? You get it wrong, they come for you. Mm. You're not sure and you want to check, they come for you. Be in a perfect position, make a call, they come for you. So it's like, I just think our poor umpires at the moment, we do not have a game without them. Yep. Put it that way. And I understand people make mistakes. Decisions are made. Um, we're seeing a lot more goal reviews and, and, you know, behind reviews and everything kind of review at the moment. But is that because people are just coming for them with mm. the, whatever they do, right or wrong? I'm just really sick of it because it would be a really challenging position to be in, to be an AFL umpire. And we need to also remember as well that these a lot of these men and women they have other jobs as well on top of being, a, you know, an official yep. of of our great game that we yep. all know and love. So, Brody, we were discussing this as well um, off air. But your response to me was like, it, if they make a wrong decision, we just want to hear from them. We just want them to say, you know what, I got that wrong. Is that how you sit on it? Yeah, I just feel like like it's a tough game. It's a double edged sword a little bit because. One wrong call could change a game, but also yeah. like, I would hate to be an umpire too. It'd be so tough. The game goes so quick these days and there's multiple rule changes every yeah. year. They've brought in another umpire as well. Yeah. So. Like it, it is tough. Don't get me wrong. And, mm. and I wouldn't like to be an umpire, but I just feel like they don't ever, you know, just put their hand up and say like, yeah, I did it. It's just like, everyone makes mistake. I, I miss kicks all the time Yeah, <laughs> um, and, and put, put my hand up to the boys and say, shit, sorry boys, miss yeah. kicks, whatever. And I just feel like maybe if there's just that, like, you know, I was wrong there. Yeah. Thing, it's like, oh yeah, fair yeah. enough. Let's move on. But. I feel like it's like kind of us versus them, mm. um, which it shouldn't be because no. we need them, like you said, the game without it. And I feel like if the players had a greater relationship, well, then maybe it would flow better. I don't know. Mm. But I just feel like at the moment it's it's an us versus them, crowd versus them. Yeah. Um, and I do feel sorry for them because, geez, it's well, a tough gig. That's a player's perspective. But I'm just saying from for the fans out there, just give it a spell.
You know what? We do not have our game without them, and I think we need to give them a break. It's impossible to umpire the perfect game, I know, because I don't get it right in my son's under 10s. <laughs> so I don't know how they do it at lightning speed when you guys are, um, are crashing around. Before we finish up, Brody, is the game faster than it's ever been? I know that sounds like a cliche. We've seen some injuries. Um, I like that the counterattack and the slingshot at the moment, like watching Sydney, is it is it faster than you ever than we've ever known? Like I feel like it was a while ago. Um, in the Hawks dynasty, it was kick and control. West Coast was a bit kick and control. Then you guys came on the scene. It was surge Just forward, the explosion, transition, yeah, the power. Yeah. yeah, is it is it faster? Do you think or I think a hundred. Even since I've this is whatever my ninth eighth season in the AFL and it's gotten so much quicker since Wait, I played. Your ninth eighth or your eighth ninth one of them. <laughs> <laughs> the ninth eighth my eighth ninth. <laughs> um, and it hundred percent has gotten quicker. Like back then, it was you know you could have a player come off the back of the square. So you could have seven at one end and five at the other. Or whatever. Yep. Now it's six, six, six. So that's made the game quicker, which yep. is obviously what they wanted. You guys stuffed but, it. Yeah. Kane Lamb and Dustin again, <laughs> ruined that rule. Um, but yeah, hundred percent. And you look at players now versus nineties, two thousands, like they're so lean now. And like, mm. you've probably got, you've got players out there in the 70, low 70 kilos, which yep. you wouldn't have had that in the nineties. No. no way. Yep. And then early two thousands, probably not. So players are getting fitter and quicker. And, um, I can't say, does that answer to more injuries, but the game, there's so many injuries at the moment, um, and mm. who knows why. It just might be pure luck, unluckiness. But could be the, um, the power and velocity, though. Like with Gibkiss, for example, when you know the players flying, the, the defenders in particular, or forwards flying for marks and then hitting the ground, just at such speed and such force. Like when you when your foot hits the ground and mm. you know the pressure on your knee. Like watching the Gibkiss one in particular, you know, my heart just sank yeah. really. But I'm unsurprised with the, the speed that the game's being played at. And we, we, we have obviously total distance run. We have high speed, which is, I'm not sure how many Ks per hour. And then we have sprint zone. Yeah. And like every single year, the high speed's going up, the sprint's going up. And it would be for every single team. So yeah. when you're running at that speed for so long, yeah. like something's got to go wrong. It's like just having your car flat out for so long. Mm. You're going to blow a head gasket at some point. They weren't tracking this in the in the 80s or the 90s, were I don't they? Think so. the yeah, but I think you're having Winnie Blue and a Coke Zero <laughs> yeah. at half time and then run back out there again. Winnie Maybe Blue. that's the key. We need a few more Winnie Blues at half time. Track how many cans out after the game. I think that was the only champion data state going around. Nathan Broad, you've been spectacular, mate. Hope that calf uh, heals up nice and we see you back out in the MCG very soon. Thanks, Jay. Thank you. Thanks, good, Abs. Good luck uh, on the weekend. Abby Holmes, always a star. Thanks, Jay. Great to see you. you. Nice support for the umpires. We'll catch you next time. I'm on Footy Talk, if you're listening on Spotify, hit the bell to be notified when we drop a new episode. The St Kilda Mafia, Lee Montagna, Nick Rewald are back tomorrow. They'll have all the gold. This is Footy Talk. If you want to get involved, send us a message on Instagram at footytalk underscore pod. Tomorrow, the Saints Mafia.